Our second reading comes from the end of the Joseph story, Genesis 45, 4 through 8, and verse 15. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Our lives are filled with many ups and downs, or maybe it's downs and ups. Most of us have experienced these downs and ups of life and have found favorite quotes to help us cope. Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it's in the courage to continue that counts. This past week at VBS, the children have experienced the Joseph story from the book of Genesis. Today, we'll look briefly at the events of Joseph's life. We're gonna find that he was thrown into the depths twice, but both times he climbed out of that pit and made it to the pinnacle. How do we find the courage during our depths to find our way to the pinnacle? It's very clear from Genesis that Joseph's father, Jacob, spoiled his child. Joseph was the favorite child, and he even went so far to make him an expensive coat. The King James Version describes it as the coat of many colors. If any of you are Broadway fans like me, you might have just conjured up an image of Donny Osmond or have, go, 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 Joseph, you know what they say, for days and days and days in your head. The favoritism that Jacob showed to Joseph created an atmosphere of jealousy and anger that led to Joseph's first pitfall, literally. Then there were the dreams, which further damaged the relationships with his brothers. Joseph sees his brothers and the heavens bowing down to him. The older brothers are serving the younger brothers. We're not sure if Joseph bragged about these dreams or he told them in a very innocent way. No matter how it came across, put all these factors together and we don't have to wonder why his brothers hated him. One day, his brothers look out across the fields and they see Joseph coming. Of course they saw Joseph coming because he was wearing that fabulous coat. The brothers put their heads together and they come up with a plan to get rid of Joseph by throwing Joseph in a pit. They strip him of his special coat, then they begin to figure out their plan. Well, it just happens right about that time, a caravan of traders traveling from Gideon to Israel passed by on their route on their way to, that went to Egypt, and the brothers quickly devise a new plan. They sell Joseph as a slave to the traders, and then they lie to their father about what just went down. They agreed to say that Joseph had been killed by wild animals and return with only a bloodied coat. We can only imagine what an impact this tragic turn of events had on Joseph. Here he was, an arrogant young man, full of himself, and convinced by his doting father that he was destined to be the head of the estate. But now this child of promise is betrayed by his own brothers. He finds himself fearing for life in the pit of despair. Our first Bible point this week at, Bio at Vacation Bible School was God loves you no matter what. When we said a Bible point, we always pointed up and said, awesome God. Will you try that with me? God loves you no matter what. Awesome God. Joseph knew he was loved by God. Joseph believed that God had destined him for greatness. Now, when Joseph was now a slave and he was working in the home of a high official, the Egyptian Potiphar recognized that Joseph was a really hard worker and he promotes him to the highest position in that household. But just at the pinnacle of his success, 
he gets thrown into the pit again. Because of his extraordinary good looks, Potiphar's wife takes a liking to him. Joseph refuses her advances over and over again, and finally, in anger at his numerous rejections, she accuses him of attacking her. And the unsuspecting Joseph winds up in prison, in the pit, again. For the second time in his life, he followed the Lord's will and got a raw deal for it. Our second Bible point this week is, God is with you everywhere. Awesome God. Genesis 39 closes by telling us that God was in that prison there with Joseph. The Bible tells us that the prison keeper put Joseph in charge of the other prisoners and adds that the keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because he knew the Lord was with him. A few chapters later, Joseph has risen to the pinnacle of power in Egypt. Twice now, Joseph has been in the pit and risen to the pinnacle. Joseph never let the disappointing turns of life get him down. Our third Bible point this week was God is in charge. Awesome God. It's not always easy to remember that. When those ups come, it's sometimes easy to forget that God is in charge. It's much easier to remember that God is in charge when things go wrong or don't go our way. The real situation we have to face is how do we handle our personal pitfalls of life? Joseph shows that God can be with us even in the pit and lead us to the pinnacle again and again if needed. Many might argue that the challenges of life are the very parts that make us great. Those pits are meant to rouse, not discourage. Our personal trials seem to be a necessary preparation for our great duties. That certainly was the case for Joseph. The fourth Bible point this week was God is stronger than anything. Awesome God. We as Christians know and believe in God's power, but how do we learn to draw that strength in our difficult times? Maya Angelou writes about overcoming the heritage of slavery and prejudice in her poem entitled, Still I Rise. Her words could have just have been easily written by Joseph, a slave in Egypt. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, Like dust, I'll rise. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise, I rise. This poem seems to capture the idea that one can overcome anything and that nothing can get you down. How many of us have that confidence and determination like Joseph to be able to rise out of the pitfalls of life? As we read through the Bible, we find many stories of people who rose from the pit to the pinnacle. Moses, the child of promise, ends up spending 40 years as an outcast in the land of Midian after killing an Egyptian woman. He sees a burning bush, heard the call of God, and he returned to Egypt saying, I rise. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, and yet when the morning light came, he proclaimed, I rise. Jeremiah was once thrown in the bottom of a well, but in the end, he proclaimed, I rise. Then we find Peter in the crucial moments of Jesus' trial, where he denied three times that he even knew Jesus. He wept bitterly, the Bible tells us, but after the forgiveness from Jesus, Peter stepped up and proclaimed, I rise. On the road to Damascus, Saul was prepared to persecute Christians, but he was struck down and blinded by a bright light. For days he couldn't see, but he emerged from this experience a transformed man. He said, I rise. Lastly, Jesus was tormented, lashed, and crucified. He was nailed to the cross of Calvary. But after three days, on an Easter morning, he proclaimed, I rise. Our final Bible point this week was God is surprising. Awesome God. 
God never changes. His love and power are always there for us, but he is full of surprises. We never know when we're going to move from that pit to the pinnacle or from the pinnacle to the pit. It can happen almost instantaneously. Nowhere does God ever say that life will be easy. But if we can face those pitfalls of life confident that God has given us the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, then we too can rise out of the pit and move to the pinnacle. Many of us experienced a low point together in March of 2020. When we went into lockdown, I felt discouraged watching the news, lonely with only Emma and Ben to see day in, day out, disoriented about what the future was going to hold, and even scared for the health of my friends, family, and myself. I knew God was in charge, awesome God, but found it hard to comprehend why I was finding myself in one of those pits of life. One of my bright spots was our online Sunday morning worship here at San Carlos. The weekly online worship, the prayer flag emails, and the online vespers brought a sense of God's sign to me that everything was eventually going to be okay. During the early part of the lockdown, one of my jobs was to write math curriculum for our San Diego Unified teachers to use online with our children. This was all new to our teachers, many not comfortable for the technology, with the technology needed. How many of us even knew about Zoom before March of 2020? I did not. I was working on lessons for our children that involved a combination of watching videos, direct teaching, and a time for reflection. One Sunday after watching uh, um, our online uh, church service, I decided I'd take a stab at putting together a mini Sunday school lesson for the children of San Carlos. I started with an easy one, I thought. Uh, Jesus feeds 5,000. I found a cartoon, some old VBS songs, Googled some Sunday school ideas, and little did I know, I was starting to climb out of that pit, slowly. I called Martha and I said, can I run an idea by you? I sent her the video and she loved it. As many of you know, I started making weekly Sunday school lessons. My family suddenly became actors and we caught fish in our backyard in our cardboard boats. We lowered a man through our roof and even dressed as superheroes and did science experiments. I had so much love and support from this congregation. In fact, from all the emails, I think there may have been more adults watching the videos than the children. Martha joked that maybe people were enjoying me more than her sermons and was getting a little concerned. It was a lot of work, but it was so rewarding. Even though we were all in separate places, God was with us everywhere. Awesome God. I finished the eight-week Miracles mini-series and was lamenting that we would not be able to do an in-person VBS that year. Knowing I needed to keep moving further out of that pit, I took on 16 weeks of an online VBS. Nance and Mark Stangle offered to do a preschool Bible piece to accompany my lessons. We coordinated our times into video in room 20 as to not physically be together and be safe. I coerced my family to take on even more roles so that we could provide VBS to our church community. That year, we had five of our own church families participate. In September, when online VBS was finished, I was asked to continue with online Sunday school and was compensated. I did a parable miniseries, an Advent miniseries, and even took on a gospel and Disney series. In April of 2021, I was asked if I would be interested in being the director of children's ministry here. God is surprising. I wasn't sure I knew how to be a director of children's ministry. Yes, I can work with kids. Yes, I had led VBS here for 14 years. Yes, I went to Sunday school, but I wasn't convinced I had the tools to take on this important job of teaching about God's love. However, I knew that God is stronger than anything. Awesome God. And he would be there for me. I knew I had a long way to go to reach that pinnacle. We were still online, but we're planning for an opening of in-person Sunday school in June. I decided to attack another VBS since it was summer and we weren't going to be able to do a full out VBS because of COVID protocols. I provided online Sunday school lessons and at the same time planned for in-person Sunday school for the summer. Our first week in Sunday school, we had two children. Those two children and I thoroughly enjoyed our first week together. 
but I won't lie. I knew those ki two kids, plus all the kids online, needed me, but I was sure hoping for a bigger group. By the end of summer, we were averaging seven to eight kids each week. Word was spreading. In the fall, I pulled together a team of volunteers who were willing to give me a chance and help teach Sunday school. At our first meeting, we had 10 potential teachers. Nance and I showed them the curriculum, spoke about our structures, gave them some tips, and asked them to sign up. By the time we sent the clipboard all the way around the room, we had every week covered through Christmas. Awesome God. We were digging our way out of that pit. By Christmas, we had a small choir sing at our family service, and we were averaging 10 to 12 kids each week in Sunday school. Then suddenly, in January, our COVID stats got worse. We had to shut down again, just as we were gaining momentum. Back to online Sunday school for a few more months. And just like Joseph, we thought we had found ourselves down in the pit again. But I knew that God loves us no matter what. He didn't care whether we were doing his work online or in person. We knew that the work we were doing was important. We were able to come back together just in time for Easter, and we had 34 children show up Easter morning. Awesome God. I had gone from the pit to the pinnacle once more in a very short time. After Easter, Nance, Emma, and I began to plan for VBS. How would it work? Would we be able to find people to volunteer? Would children sign up to come? Would COVID cooperate? Several months of planning, building sets, more planning, more building sets, blood, sweat, tears, here we are today. I couldn't have done it without this congregation, my family, and Nance by my side. Every time I say I have another idea, people start to scatter <laughs> quickly. This past week, we had 40 children attend Monumental VBS and 26 volunteers to help. I know we are not at the top of the pinnacle yet, but it's feeling pretty good. The children's ministry here at San Carlos has been resurrected. It's been a long but rewarding two years. I will say, I rise. When we hear the promise of God and the recognize the power of God to help us overcome, we will be like Joseph, Moses, Daniel, Jeremiah, Peter, Paul, and even Jesus. We are given the power of resurrection. Then we will say with Maya Angelou, I rise, I rise, I rise.